The champions of Israel are at the top of their game as the club enters the second half of the Super League season. After testing their skills against the best in all of Europe, Maccabi Haifa returns home to defend their title from the likes of top clubs Hapoel Jerusalem and Maccabi Tel Aviv. For the players, it's a time for growth and building relationships, while discovering parts of the world most never get a chance to see. For the fans, winning the club's first ever championship was historic, but a return to the promised land would be unbelievable. They control the rebound. Can't get it to go. Maccabi Haifa wins. It was a special opportunity for Maccabi Haifa to be invited into the Euro Cup tournament, their second time in three years. We need to do a better job on the pick and roll. Let's go. Coming off an Israeli championship, expectations were high as the team pitted itself against some of the top clubs in all of Europe. I think it's a really uh, intense league to more organized basketball. And you combine that with talent, there's a really tough league and really competitive. Ronchich for three. All of the teams are shooting the ball extremely well. And most of the, you know, all of the teams have big size and the size that you don't see in the Israeli league. We need to protect the paint first, to move throughout most of the, all the game. Even though we're going to make a screen, we're going to make a full rotation for those two guys. If later in the game we need to make a triple switch, we'll make it. Playing in both Israel and Europe means the team has to play an extra game per week, making roster depth extremely important. So the club signed 6'8 power forward Adrian Henning, a former Euro Cup All-Star who's also coming off a Mexican League title. Joining a new team mid-season can be a challenge, but Henning found a way to quickly blend in. The most important thing to me is like getting along off the court. I feel like um, if you get along with each other in practice and off the court, then it'll translate well when you get on the court because you'll still be close. Henning with the jam, big play, Maccabi Haifa. The guys are being very understanding, they're being patient with me, the coach is being patient with me, and um, I just hope that I can continue uh, to do all that I can to help the team win. I don't think uh, playing two games a week is an issue in our team. We have uh, a lot of guys who can play and a lot of guys who can step up every given night. First of all, it's a lot of benefit. I think uh, every player you're going to ask is uh, like more to play than uh, practice. But on the other side, you know, last year we had uh, much more time to prepare for every league game. This year we don't even work on our stuff because we're dealing always with scouting, the emotions, everything. But above all, I think it's a blessed thing. It's one of the things that create uh, Maccabi Haifa is a big, big club, big name, uh, not only in Israel, also in Europe. After breezing through the first stage of the Euro Cup, Maccabi Haifa advanced to the round of 32. The Greens got off to a good start with wins at home against Nimburg of the Czech Republic and Siena of Italy. However, Haifa would struggle on the road, losing all of their away games. The elimination may be difficult to bear, but the experience is something the club can take with them through the remainder of the season. As the season will go on, we will live, be more organized and we will practice more and we will be more ready for each game. I think we, it will help us. To be part of this group of teams, of the best one of the you know, top teams in Europe, it's a big compliment for the club. We build the tradition here. With Euro Cup no longer in their sights, the Greens now turn all focus to the Super League and defending their title. Starting point guard, Moran Roth, has had a prolific career in Israel. A member of the Israeli national team and a league all-star, Roth won a championship in 2008 with Hapoel Holon, as well as the State Cup title with Maccabi Tel Aviv last season. He has played all over Israel, but this is the first time he can call Haifa his home, a bit of an adjustment he and his family had to make. I think we made a good choice that you came to play in uh, Haifa. You remember, it was all oh, Haifa or Jerusalem. Yes. Two big city, two big things. Yes. And then we decided to sign Haifa. Yeah, you went over my mom's. And 
that morning. And then you told her you don't know if to go to Haifa or Apoel Yerushalayim. You remember? And she helped me to decide that uh, I need to go with my heart. Yes. To come to a team that uh, won the championship, it's never easy, you know, to, especially in Israel, that there is a one team that controlled so many years. But it's a great challenge, I, and I'm happy to take this challenge. I think now in Haifa, I'm in the right place, in, the, in a great place to stay a long time, because really Haifa basketball, it's, it's like a family, I feel it. And the hardest part for me, it's like to be a little far away from uh, you and the kids. If uh, last year or years before I played next to house and and now I need to make uh, the to take the train, to take the train or, and the and bus sleep over and here. sleep over alone, and you are uh, with the kids at home. So I think it's uh, you are doing a great, great job that you let me <laughs> really you let me to go so far away and uh, live the dream. My basketball career, it's, no, it's not forever. So when I came to Haifa, I'm 31 years old. What do you think about uh, like the, the situation of, uh, you know, we, we move so many places, highs, lows. I always told you that I love your career because it allowed me to be part of your career. I can come to the games, I, I meet all your colleagues. I don't know, it's nice for me, and fun, and a lot of adrenaline, and uh, excitement. So you don't want like it to finish? I like your career. No, so you don't I don't want, want it to finish. No. <laughs> it's okay. Me too, <laughs> me too. You like to I allowed you to continue for many, many years more. Basketball isn't the only thing fans get to see on the court. Up next, we meet Maccabi Haifa's dance team as they hit the floor. Maccabi Haifa as an organization is very detail-oriented, so it comes as no surprise that everything surrounding the exceptional play on the court is on point, especially the cheerleading and dance squad. I'm teaching their, their girls six years, seven years. They start dancing at the studio, and then uh, we get the offer to become uh, cheerleaders, and uh, we take the offer. It's another op opportunity uh, for us to show our dance, and we love to dance, so it's very fun. In Romema, especially, home court of Maccabi Haifa, the cheerleaders feed off the fans, just like the players often do, which creates a great atmosphere. There was so much energy. Every time it was a timeout, we were so excited. It's our time to, to do our job. The fans were so excited. The fans gave us a lot of uh, energy, and it was, uh, it was wonderful. The Green 8, Haifa's mascot, also lends a hand in getting the crowd going. He started dancing at the studio. He's a dancer too. He's doing the, all the entertainment and party stuff. For these girls, dancing has been their passion for most of their lives, and despite all of the hard work and dedication, they truly do love it. I became a cheerleader, I was a dancer. I mean, it was uh, something that I did a lot of time before I became a cheerleader of Maccabi Bazan Haifa. It's our life, it's our passion, we love to do it. A lot of work, a lot of practice, uh, but because we love it, it's very easy for us. We have the many competitions in our studio and the, all times we have the first place or Grand Prix. And maybe two place. <laughs> we want to introduce you the trap we get from the competition of cheerleaders we were. Uh, Before three years, three years we won in this, in this trophies. And 
We're very proud in what we're doing. And we got the first place. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. It was a very amazing year. I remember it. We worked very hard and uh, it's worth that. <laughs> Look what we get. Absolutely. <laughs> and this is all the clothes of our traffics from all the competition in the world and in Scranton. Most of them uh, are the hip hop tracks. Most of them won in the first place or Grand Prix. Grand Prix before the first place. Yes. It's the best. <laughs> it's family. It can't even. We, can, we, can we even can't even imagine us uh, without the studio and without dancing and without, uh, without children. Mm -hmm. קודם כל אנחנו מאוד אוהבות להגיע לשם ולעודד ולרקוד בשביל קהל ובשביל הקבוצה. ואני חושבת שכל בן אדם שעושה משהו שהוא אוהב בחיים שלו, זה בעצם מה שמתגמל אותך ונותן לך את הסיפוק וההנאה המלאה. ומה שבעצם עושה לך חיים שמחים ומאושרים. ו... אני מאוד אוהבת את זה, ובנות מאוד אוהבות את זה, ואנחנו מגיעות לשם בשמחה וברצון. ופשוט אנחנו מקבלות אושר מכל מה שאנחנו עושים. The Israeli Super League season rolls on, and for Maccabi Haifa, it is history in the making. Will a long win streak be enough to keep them atop the standings? Find out after the break. It's back to the Super League for Maccabi Haifa and time to redirect their focus on returning to the championship. The Greens had a 7-5 record at the end of December and stuck in a battle for fourth place. Maccabi Haifa wins. Final score 79-76. But Maccabi Haifa would begin their climb with a three-game win streak to end January, improving to 11-6. They carried that streak into a road game against a struggling Hapoel Halon. After the end of the first quarter, Halon had a six-point lead. They maintained the lead nearly the entire game until the end of the fourth quarter. With their never-say-die attitude, Haifa went on a 14-0 run to claim a four-point lead with under a minute to go. The Greens hung on to win, the victory propelling them to third place. The following week, Haifa returned home to take on a pesky Nessiona team. Carr with the back pass. Nice play by Nessiona. Good block. Good block by Rice. All the way up to Brian Randall. What a dunk flying in there. The Greens took an early lead, but the team in orange and white battled back throughout most of the game. But he gets his own rebound. Here's Rob. Roth for three! Beautiful shot, Moran Roth, giving Maccabi Haifa the lead. In the final three minutes of regulation, Haifa pulled away and put away Nessiona, 92-83. The Greens went back on the road to face Gilboa Galil. However, without their point guard, Moran Roth, due to illness. But David Kubian, stepped up and Maccabi Haifa did not miss a beat as they routed the team in red by a score of 98-69, increasing the win streak to six games. Maccabi Haifa will go to 14 and six, Gilboa Galil, eight and 12. Maccabi Haifa holds on to third place, extending the gap from Hapoel Tel Aviv. Meanwhile, a pivotal game between Maccabi Tel Aviv and Hapoel Jerusalem for first place. Tel Aviv came away with a victory to tie Jerusalem in the standings. The Yellows struggled early this season, but put together a strong run to climb back up. When we return, Ben and Ike explore another side of Israel as they make a trip out to the desert for a taste of the simple life. How does it feel? Being on the cover. At least it looked better than some of the girls you date. <laughs>
Uh, grew up in San Antonio, uh, Texas. Five brothers and sisters. And the crazy thing is, my parents didn't want me to play basketball because you know, <laughs> you know, uh, being a foreigner in the United States, my parents are all about books. But then when they realized we could get scholarships for uh, playing basketball, they were, they were like, uh, "Go ahead, do it." <laughs> One day we just watching TV, saw Clyde Drexler going against Michael Jordan, and we just decided to play. Uh, play basketball because my family, my dad was a soccer player. We played on the uh, soccer national team for Nigeria, so we grew up playing soccer. So then when we saw growing up in the States, seeing basketball was a real big sport in the States, we decided to pick up basketball. Uh, not a lot of people are able to travel the world, uh, see the things I've seen, um, the different cultures, the different environments, different Places. I mean, it's, it's a real blessing and uh, it's just exciting. Michael Faber who jams. I played in Belgium for two years. Uh, played in Venezuela, uh, Mexico. Um, I was I was an artist. Played in Argentina, uh, Puerto Rico. As far as just like the interaction, I say Israel is probably the best place. As far as like the weather and uh, the people here are very friendly. Ike is a funny guy. I... I like, his, I like his sense of humor. Ike is a silent assassin. He's a very, very quiet person, but uh, very, very strong. He's just a good person to be around. You know, there's a lot, of, a lot of personality that comes through when you get to know him. And, and on the court, he's talented. At the beginning of the season, in the first couple of games, he was a surprise for some of the teams. Not for us, because we were following him for a couple of years and we know what he can do. I'm very blessed to um, be a part of a team that's uh, with a good group of guys. It is Aiko Febu's first time in Israel. And just like any other time he has played in a new country, there is a bit of an adjustment period. Lucky for him, he has teammate Ben Rice by his side to show him around. Here in Israel, the guys are very, very nice. I mean, they speak English, first of all, so they're able to uh, interact with you and they're real friendly and they understand us not being uh, at home, so they're real open to showing us places. To finally be here in Israel is uh, very exciting and uh, I'm just blessed to be here. This is a Bedouin camp. The people here are a part of a desert-dwelling Arabian ethnic group traditionally divided into tribes or clans. This is the famous desert of Israel. One of the special animals in Israel, the camel. It's a very ugly animal, as you see. They carry all the water in their bag, so they, they succeed to live here, you know. Gotcha. <laughs> Is your camel pee? What? You pee? <laughs> Are we racing or something? Racing? <laughs> oh, chill, chill, chill. <laughs> How does it feel? Being on a camel. At least they look better than some of the girls you date. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my balls, man. <laughs> Why is your camera looking at me? Why is your camera looking at me? Ike. What's up? You hungry? Am I hungry? Yeah. A little bit. Can eat uh, the camera. Are you serious? Yeah. Really? How you make them go faster? You kick them on the side or something? I'm going to have to rest my... Uh, my little guys are hurting a little bit. <laughs> easy, easy. <laughs> now we're going to a place that we can chill, rest, drink tea, have something uh, to eat. I'm expecting jacuzzi. <laughs> jacuzzi? Women. No, man. Hey, the wrong spot. Massa man. No, man. No, no jacuzzi. No massage. No massage. Nothing. No electricity. No computer, no PlayStation. I'm an 80s baby. I need electricity, cell phone. You need all this stuff, huh? I need all that stuff. This is the man. My man. What's your name? Ahmed. Ahmed. Ben? Hi, Ike. 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 Nice to meet you. <laughs> you can do it? 
everybody, my name is Muhammad and here I host you, I tell you something, stories about the Bedouin life, about the Bedouin culture, you know, we have very old culture in the world, around 7,000 years. The Bedouin are the people who live in the desert, desert in Arabic, Badia, from this word we get the word Bedouin. We use the tents in the desert for houses. We offer the guests three cups of coffee, two saps and the cup for the welcome guest, every cup has name and meaning, two saps for the welcome guest. To offer him full cup of coffee, full cup of coffee that's mean bye bye. Let him try. <laughs> yeah. Let go. <laughs> okay, this is the way to tell the neighbors we have visitors and we tent. And they can come if they want to help and enjoy together. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So now we're going to eat. Oh, thank you. Bon you. Thank, you. thank you. Are you familiar with uh, the ingredients that we have here? No. Nope. Corn. <laughs> Corn. What's this? Beans? Beans. Kind of. Yeah. Wheat. Wheat. Yeah. And large peppers with grounded uh, meat in it. Okay. Yeah. Beef. And we have roasted tomatoes and... What is this right here? That's a yam and artichoke. Are you ready, man? I'm ready. I'm ready. Last time I trusted you, Ben, I was late to practice. I was joking, man. 